Hey everyone, Taylor here, and today I want to talk about my nightmare that was a link to the past. Now, if you've been following me on Twitter, I've been knocking games off my backlog. Uh, I made a list uh, of games, and I'll, I'll have them on the screen right now because I know a couple of people were asking what's the full list. But I've been trying to knock games off my backlog because I have so many games in my collection that I bought and either never played or just all-time classics that everybody who considers themselves, you know, a gamer or like whatever that means or, you know, is considers gaming one of their big hobbies should play. And so I've slowly but surely throughout this year been whittling away at games. And, you know, as the year goes on, I want to make more videos about the, the games as I'm playing them and finishing them. But just recently, I had finished A Link to the Past. Now, for reference, I had never played A Link to the Past when it first came out or ever since. This was literally the very first time I ever played this game. And it was on my 3DS, on the uh, on new 3DS, on the, the eShop version. And, you know, Zelda is a series that I've always really wanted to get into. And I just, I just can't. Um, you know, I started and could not finish or Ocarina of Time, both on N64 and the 3DS version, uh, Wind Waker HD on Wii U, and Twilight Princess on the Wii. And I just couldn't, I don't know what it was, I just couldn't beat those games. I just got bored or frustrated. Um, but as I, I'll get into it in a little bit, I, I think I have a better reason why. But the only game I ever finished in the Legend of Zelda series that I really, really liked was A Link to the Past, or excuse me, A Link Between Worlds, on 3DS, sort of a spiritual successor to A Link to the Past. And I love that game. It's one of my favorite games on the system. And so I was thinking to myself, okay, everybody talks about A Link to the Past in in terms of it being maybe the best game in the series. And everybody seems to love it. So I'm like, okay, I really enjoyed A Link Between Worlds, so I'm probably going to like A Link to the Past. But it became evident very quickly as I started playing this game, that that was not going to be the case. Um, this is unabashedly an old game. And what I mean by that is it's very cryptic. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, if you played the first Zelda game on the NES, that's all that game is, is cryptic. You you light random bushes on fire and it leads you to places. Well, you know, I got to say, I play games to have fun. I don't necessarily play games to be challenged mentally if I you know if I want to do that I'll take a, a test or a quiz or or you know all it, it's all about expectations I don't go in like if I'm playing a game and I know it's going to be a, a mind bender like portal or something like that that's different but if I go into a game like Zelda it's an adventure game where you're exploring your you're you know you're going through dungeon you're fighting monsters then I'm like okay I just want it to be a fun game where it'll have some light puzzle elements to keep your brain going a little bit but it's not you're not going to have to go crazy figuring stuff out. And this game, to me, is just ultra cryptic with how you complete the game, how you collect items, how you upgrade items, how you progress through the dungeon. And I honestly, people are probably going to be mad at, at the, as I say this, and it might, I might, might be wrong, but I don't, I don't think I am. I just think that the game doesn't teach you its rules in the best way possible. And what I mean by that is there are games that teach you the mechanics naturally or just through tutorials, maybe very ham-fisted ways. And, you know, Zelda does it uh, in bits and pieces, right? So, like, for example, you'll see cracks in the wall and it's like, okay, that's where I either use my Pegasus boots and run into it or I drop a bomb there and I blow it up. That's It's very obvious that that's a cracked wall and that's what that's for. Well, throughout this game, uh, there are moments where you need to, to either move or walk through objects that you've seen hundreds if not thousands of times as you're exploring the world. Uh, and the game never teaches you naturally through a beginner quest or a beginner dungeon that that's something that you can do. So for example, to upgrade some of your items like the shield and stuff like that, there is a waterfall that you can walk right through. And in the in this on the other side of this waterfall, there is a fairy that if you throw items in there she'll upgrade your stuff there is never a point in the game to my recollection i could be i could have been in a frustrated rage and never remember this but to my recollection there's never a moment in the game where it teaches you that that is something you can do naturally uh it's just 
a game about figuring that stuff out for yourself. And, and to me, that's bad design. That just, it leaves it up to the player to just sort of figure stuff out. And I don't, I don't like games that hide stuff. You know, I'm not, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not somebody who plays games to discover mysteries and, and dig in every corner. I know uh, people like the Dark Souls series, for example, for, for those types of reasons, because the lore is hidden on the item descriptions and stuff. I like a game that's straightforward and you can discover things either in a more natural way or the game hints that you can do this. And so you start experimenting. Now, had you not known that, you know, there's another, there are moments where you absolutely have to experiment like that to, to progress through the game. So there's a temple, I, I'm assuming it's the water temple. I don't know if that's the official name, but there is a moment where you can't progress unless you walk through a waterfall in the wall. And it, all the waterfalls look like any other waterfall you've seen in, throughout the entire game. So there's no moment where you're like, oh, yeah, let me just walk through this waterfall. And that's how you'll do it. Had I not had a guide, I would have just turned the game off. Um, but, you know, I, I found the guide. I'm like, you're kidding. This would have been the last thing I would have tried. You know, I was trying all these different items, hitting different th things. Uh, and, of course, as you walk through this waterfall. Uh, another moment to literally get to Turtle Rock, which is the one of the final dungeons in the game. You need the Earthquake Medallion. Well, to get the Earthquake Medallion, you have to go to a lake. In this lake, there is a collection of rocks that form a circle. You then have to throw any item. It doesn't matter what, what the item is. You have to throw an item into that pool of rocks. And then a fish will give you this medallion. And it's just like, how would anybody know to do that? Like, I commend anybody. And I'm sure there's tons. There's obviously tons, thousands, if not millions of people out there who beat this game when it came out as a kid or as an adult. And I just got to say bravo because I don't know how anybody figured any of this stuff out. It just seems so ultra cryptic. Um, and then there's moments that are parts in the game that are just purely frustrating for the sake of it. So there's, an, there's a dungeon called the Skull Woods where you go in and out of these caves that are shaped like skulls. Uh, and at certain points, there's a hand that comes down and grabs you and just throws you back to the, the beginning of the dungeon if you're waiting around too long. And I gotta say, I had not been so frustrated and mad at a game as I was during the Skull Woods. There are parts where you have to be very meticulous in the way you push things, uh, and there's enemies that don't go, at, go down easily, and you need to defeat them and pay attention to when the, the Skull hand's coming down. It's just like, how is that fun or challenging? It's just annoying and frustrating and i literally almost snapped my 3ds in half multiple times uh because of how frustrating that was and i i i can see people out there like maybe that played the first zelda and and they say you know zelda is all about adventuring and just trying things well I, you know i've finally come to a point in my life that i can finally say zelda is just not a series that's for me and that's okay not every series is for everybody you know uh, you know, Final Fantasy 15 was a very divisive game. I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people that didn't. In fact, one of my co-hosts on the Giant Sword podcast, uh, I think all of them didn't like that game. And that's okay. You know, it's okay to have differing opinions. Um, and I'm not bashing anybody that likes A Legend of Zelda or Link to the Past or obviously Breath of the Wild is getting like unreal reviews right now. But this is just a game and a series that's not for me. And I've kind of come to the point where I'm like, okay. Every time a Zelda game comes out, I just know it's not for me. I even thought for sure, I thought for sure the Wind Waker was going to be the game for me. I was like, I love anything tropical. I love, you know, on the ocean. And I love the anime art style. It looks gorgeous on the Wii U. Like that HD remake looks so good. But it just wasn't for me. And I was so sad that that's where I came to. I really wanted to love that game a lot. And I wanted to love A Link to the Past a lot, you know, I, I, like I said at the beginning, I enjoyed A Link Between Worlds, so I just figured I'd like A Link to the Past, but just not for me. Uh, and I don't know if modern games have ruined me. I don't know what it is, but I've been getting a lot of interesting feedback. There's a lot of people that say this is my favorite game of all time, or this is my favorite Zelda game, and there's other people who are like, oh, you're totally right. I can't stand this game. So it's been really interesting to play this game way after the fact, and then just kind of uh, see how people are reacting to it. So uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Have you played A Link to the Past and beaten it? And, you know, did you beat it when it came out? I I'm really curious. If you beat this game back in the day, I'd love to know how long it took you and how you figured all these puzzles out because 
without a guide, I would have never, ever in my entire life beat this game. I, I would have gotten frustrated and just put it down and, and played something else. So, uh, this you know, as I'm going through my backlog, I want to be better about cataloging my experiences as I go through these games. It, it might not be as fresh in my mind, but I definitely want to go back and do episodes on Final Fantasy X and Mega Man Legends because those are games I, I for a long time, wanted to cross off my backlog, and we're very happy to do so. So, uh, anyways, guys, let me know what you thought of Link to the Past, and uh, maybe if you're trying to cross some games off your backlog in this uh, just crazy mess that is the beginning of the year for modern games. There's just so many games that are not only coming out, but are just excellent, and they're all big, huge games that take a long time. And hey, Persona 5 is right around the corner, so make sure you uh, you know you set aside some money and time for that one. So, uh, anyways, guys, thanks once again for watching, and we'll see you next time.